Houston Hotel Arsenal bust above New Year's Eve celebration. New Year's Eve celebration. Caught him drunk, stumbling around with a bunch of weapons and ammo. Uh, hopefully, that's just some crazy person. They weren't actually planning something. Trump promises in 2018 to do much, much more on regulations, on other taxes, on going after the welfare queens that have been domesticated by the globalist. We're going to look at what's coming up in the year ahead. But first off, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of other exciting news on Infowars.com that we're going to be going over. And we're going to be looking at the amazing developments with The Nation and The New York Times and even CNN coming out with headlines like this little jewel. See, I'm so excited I can't even hardly hold a piece of paper in my hands. Seriously, I can feel the energy. Can't you? 2018 is going to be a doozy. You think 2016 was big, 2017? It just goes forward in the human singularity with technology, human populations, the good, the bad, the ugly. I mean, we are tied to a rocket ship, ladies and gentlemen. And we're either going to Valhalla or we're going on an express elevator to hell. So get ready. But I can feel the energy. Wow. Mm, and it's good energy overall. There's a little dark energy twisted over there on the dark side of the moon. But other than that, this is an amazing time right now. Trump is right about the FBI. That's the headline out of CNN. They say the FBI is a political operation at the top run by the Clintons, engaging in a major frame up of Trump, and that it's all a giant fraud, and that it's destroying the FBI and governmental institutions and turbocharging Trump. The only reason they're saying drop the Russia investigation now is because it blew up in their face, as we told you months ago it had already done, and now it's even evident to them. They tried to paper over it, tried to not cover it on CNN, MSNBC, didn't work, so now they are crapping their globalist pedophile britches. Uh, and here it is out of the nation, the so-called pinnacle of liberal socialist pinhead uh, thinking. Russia Gate is devolving into an effort to stigmatize dissent. No, it was always an effort to stigmatize nationalist and free market dissent in an attempt to overturn the election, overturn all the other major elections of 2016 and bring in globalist federalized control after Trump was removed to never have another free election. You failed at your effort to stigmatize dissent. So now you're taking the high horse road because you've been caught. But again, it's everywhere. It's beyond blood in the water. It's sharks dining on the leftist lemmings and the controlled corporate press that took itself from dead to undead with all the globalist funding the last few years to now simply disappearing in a puff of ashes into the atmosphere. What an amazing time to be alive, a time of True renewal. Yes, we face amazing challenges, but Trump knows for every yin, there's a yang. And that parasitic behavior, globalism, a program of making people poor to control them, feudalism, that been done for the entire history of recorded human annals. But Renaissance was only 460-something years old. Our Republic only 244 years old. The idea of empowering humanity, turning loose the lower classes, and then finding the great genius that lied therein. There's no doubt that even limited free market capitalism, because we've never achieved full capitalism, produces such innovation, such choice, such wealth, such dynamics that compared to communism, it's like comparing a dumb, inanimate rock to the mind of God. But that is the mind of God. Free will, choice, but with that comes great responsibility because if you're given so much power, will you become a narcissistic Luciferian? Will you decide to keep others from the Promethean fire, which you have been given? Will you attempt to hoard the light to yourself? Falling in love like narcissists with his own reflection. That way lies ruin. But for those of us that seek 
the Dark Tower, the quest to be honorable, strong men and build up society and civilization, this is a very, very special time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. But it is like taking breath, or taking a cup of wine before the real fight. It is the breath before we're sucked under. So take a deep breath and get ready because the final challenge in the next 35, 40 years on whether we will survive as a species or whether we will destroy ourselves in satanic delusions is now before us. We are at the crossroads. And my great sin, Donald Trump's great sin, many of yours great sin, according to the globalist, pedophile devil worshipers, the selfish ones, is that we believe in humanity and are confident and want to build others up. And so they play us knowing we have a conscience, knowing we care to give up our own will and wealth to supposedly help the individual who is poor, but it's really only through another combine to set them up as the master. But Trump knows that if he can turn America and the world around, at least financially, and get us back to basic tenets we know are designed to work and do work versus collectivism, communism, and all the dehumanization and mass murder that follows it. If he can simply do that, when they talk about Camelot and the Kennedys, who are seriously silver spoon wannabe elitist, and, and, and I mean, I don't want to say bad people overall, but give me a break. That was just TV getting fancy and media learning how to doll people up. And, and, and so it, it, was, it was like a tabloid presidency. With Trump, he's got the supermodel goddess uh, beyond feminine, powerful, flame-throwing female. The real energy, the real power. Now the most popular person in America, according to Gallup. Everything is imploding in their face. He's got that. But what he's really delivering is a belief in the worker, the belief in the family, the belief in the individual, and a chance to help you get the chip off your shoulder and move forward. And that infuriates the vampires, the spiritually hunchback devils who absolutely hate your will, hate your strength, hate your honor, and hate your goodwill. And they ravenously want to pull you down and want to destroy you and want to annihilate you because your very existence, your good heart, your love of God is like nails on a chalkboard to them spiritually. And the only consciousness they have is to destroy you. The only will they have is to annihilate you. The world is in a rotting, corrupt, twisted, betrayed, withering depression right now. And so, as grandiose and quite frankly grotesque at times, Trump is like the ghost of Christmas present. It's what we need. And it's the thing, the perfect thing to challenge the austerity and the poverty, and the bondage, and the backstabbing, and the twistedness, and the failure that is globalism, and communism, and collectivism, and all of its systems of centralization. And Trump knows that if he delivers, the Trump dynasty will be unmatched. The problem is, the sons are good, the daughters aren't bad, they're women. And they want to conform in their culture. They're from New York. And they continue to try to virtue signal. And I'm sure that Trump's daughter could end up you know, being president of Ivanka someday. She's beautiful. She's smart. But she's a compromiser. And as I go off another side issue, I can just see into the future, as anybody else could see, not with magical powers, but with the powers of deduction God gave us. And... I can tell you now undoubtedly that it's the same spirit that Trump has that I have in that I 
am so confident, not in an arrogant way, but that I couldn't lie to somebody or try to hold them down so I would feel powerful over them. And it's that simple spirit that separates us from the devil worshipers. That's who they are. It's all about them, total selfishness. Well, we're going to make it all about us. You want to dominate and destroy us? It is about us, all of us together, not you. And it's about you getting out of the way and getting behind us, Satan. And it really does come down to those yin 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 archetypes. But that's where we are. And I mean, I knew globalism was real. I knew their world government plan was real. I was reading the white papers, seeing it happen, reading stuff they wrote 50 years ago and seeing it you know, come true in the, in the early 90s. And, and I mean, with exact programming and reading the CFR publications every two months when it came out and, and, and then telling people and having news articles written about me saying, this man's a liar, he's dangerous. And then having news reporters go, listen, we're mercenaries. We really agree with you. Keep, keep it up with tears in their eyes. Democrat politicians coming over to me and going, listen, son, we like what you're doing. A lot of us made wrong choices and are slaves now, but I hope, you, I hope you're successful. And the Republican blue blood trash, they're the worst. The point is, is that just as Americana was born, as Alexander de Tocqueville, the historian, wrote about, about not liking royalty, not liking class, just because somebody was from an upper class, you didn't worship them, even though they were a moronic, you know, inbred idiot. It was about what you actually did. McCabe, Rosenstein, I mean, they're all involved with the Russians. They're all involved with the companies. They're involved killing investigations. They're involved getting money. They sold out our uranium. I mean, they're globalists. They're not Russian agents. They sell out to anybody that wants to gang rape America. And so Trump comes in and says, we're not going to have 38.9% taxes and China has 15. We're going to have 15. And so China, by the way, lowered his taxes to zero to counter America. See how that works, folks? See how that works? But that's coming up. Sorry. But the reason it's important is the etymology, the historical genetic history of this compendium, of this story. Because remember, I have been called a Russian agent. They have congressional hearings in the Senate and the House, armed services, intelligence committees. We've played the clips here at nauseum. If you're a new listener, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm not going to play them again. You can look them up. They're on Infowars.com. And they admit in the hearings that they have no evidence I'm a Russian agent. But then they say, but he is one, so we're censoring Alex Jones. They're using this to kill dissent. And finally, CNN, the New York Times... Uh, I mean, I've got a stack of news I'm going to go over here in a minute. Mainstream news today. Coming out saying Russiagate is devolving into an effort to stigmatize dissent. It didn't devolve. Hitler didn't devolve into a Nazi in 1945. He was a Nazi. Gonorrhea doesn't devolve into gonorrhea. Okay? But why are they all coming out this weekend and in the last week? Why are they all coming out suddenly saying, okay, it's a total fraud, it's authoritarian, it's all a lie? Because they got caught and it blew up in their face. I mean, I'm not going to go over it again, but there are 26 Justice Department and FBI people that are senior and five or six others we found, but they're mid-level aides. But there's like 26, 27, depending on how you look at it, Justice Department and FBI officials who were all running the Russiagate thing. And then they like basically all, except for a couple, gave money to their wives and husbands of government money in the millions to put out the PPGay dossier. So not only is the PP gate, this is what they're really scared of, fake with BuzzFeed. They're getting sued and getting basically bankrupt over it, reportedly. It's not just that. It, the real crime is the millions of taxpayer dollars from the FBI and Justice Department to the wives and husbands of people at Fusion GPS that made it up. I mean, it was like a 40-something page report that a 10-year-old could have written. It's so badly written, it looks like it was written in finger paints or something. But they got millions of dollars to write it. So this has blown up so bad, so crazily. These arrogant people thought they were invincible because the power went to their heads. And so now the New York Times, CNN, 
the nation. They're not coming out in the last couple of days. This all started after Christmas, last five days, since the 26th. They didn't start coming out and doing this because they really are suddenly good people. They've been some of the biggest floggers of this. They're letting people now come write the truth, some of them who are good people, by the way, but bad publications, because they know it's over. So let me just announce to you right now, Russia Gate blew up in their face about a month ago, as we first told you, and, and, and as I've said, it's over, it's done, but they're going to try to paper over it and keep the con game going. It didn't work. And now... They have committed so many crimes, leaking disinfo, not just leaking. They have been caught with the Russians, with the communist Chinese, with everything. They are crapping their britches, suing for peace with the president. And I have told the president every time I talked to him, I said, when you defeat them in the next year and they sue for peace, sir, they are that is when they're going to try to assassinate you. And he says, first time I told him, he goes, very interesting. Hold on, Alex. He goes off because he goes, tell me more about that. And I'm not going to leave the rest of the uh, uh, conversation. I'm, I'm not going to tell you anymore. But Trump, as the media points out, does respect InfoWars and does respect our research because we're on target. It's why the audience does. And we have the sources. And that's why they battle to keep the president from our information. Because a lot of it doesn't just come from me. We're going to have Michael Caputo, a former advisor to Trump, high level, on. They try to keep him away from Caputo. We get through to him through people close to the president with this show. And the president does end up watching clips every week. He requests them. And, and I'm just letting the media know that so they can know they failed miserably. Michael Caputo is coming on. Roger Stone, Dr. Corsi. Because here's the big news. The purge of the globalists, not extrajudicially, not with death squads, not outside law, but through the Constitution and through the will of the people, begins next week. Get ready. Because the hammer is coming down. And the cleaning house is about to happen. And from the beginning, there was a split in the Trump administration on whether he should let the globalists creep off with their money, leave them alone. And they lied then and said they'd leave them alone, but they never did. And it wasn't like the president was selling out. You know, it might be best at one level not to have this civil war or not do all this because the globalists are dangerous, but they'll never give up. I can tell you now the president has decided to go on the offensive and it's happening. Trump is getting ready to go on the offense in T minus six and a half hours, ladies and gentlemen. So get ready for 2000 and. 18 to be a whopper. Now, understand this, though. We're not arrogant globalists that think we're invincible and are power drunk. We've got major beachheads. The public's starting to wake up. Globally, globalism's in trouble because it's so authoritarian. But we've got to replace it at every level with integrity and honor and truth and justice and classic populism and a respect of the people and a respect of women and a respect of men and a respect of children and a respect of each other. Because our country and the world has gone through grievous wounds of globalist engineering. And we're in deep trouble. I'm only happy because it's like we're in a coma and we started babbling and our eyes opened and, you know, America's had a big bowel movement. We're kind of flopping around here on the table going, you know, Ugh, but at least something's going on. And I use that gross analogy because somebody that comes out of a big coma, that usually happens. I mean, I mean, we're, we're but you know, we're there, folks. We're, we're coming out of the trance, the sleeping giants awakening, and praise God. You know, I, I, I talked about how Trump absolutely is delivering. And after all these decades of betrayal, wouldn't that be the smart move even for a sociopath? And I'm not saying he's a sociopath, he's the opposite. People said, well, you better thank God. I thank God constantly. But I also want to thank you. And God thanks you because you carry the light in the dark of the night. And uh, I don't care what color you are, where you came from. I love you. This is directly out of the mouth of one of the highest level people in the White House. Now, they may change their mind about resigning. And it's not Tillerson.
Tillerson was going to resign, and now he's doing some face-saving stuff, and it's back and forth. That could happen the next month. It, it's somebody else. And this is important, though, because who they want to replace him with. So that's coming up. And we've got Michael Caputo, former high-level Trump advisor, who's been accused of being a Russian agent with no evidence, just like I have. I'm like, call me into court. I want the FBI to come over here. I mean, I've said it on air. I've actually called them myself and demanded they come here and put up or shut up. And, of course, they're just like, yeah, start laughing. Yes, Mr. Jones, we, we understand you're not a Russian agent or involved the Russians. I, I mean, I, I've said I want to be in front of Congress. I mean, I, I'm sick of this. I'm tired of this. Because I want lower taxes and sovereignty and to control our borders, and I'm pro-Christian and pro-free market. I'm a Russian agent. Well, then we better all be Russian agents then. Think how crazy that is when it's the Democrats and the globalists that hate this country that have been trying to destroy it forever. But if you just joined us, I'm going to Dr. Jerome Corsi in this segment and the next, and, and because he's been hammering on what is in the 8chan boards and, and QAnon and the rest of it, and you can look at what QAnon says, a lot of it's accurate, but that doesn't matter. We can see in real news what's happening and how Trump is purging the pedophiles. He is purging the money launderers. He is going after the globalists. This is all happening. And it's about to go supernova next year. Because first year with Trump is salvage. Next year is destroy. That means go after the bad guys. And you've seen nothing but promise keeping. On TPP, on NAFTA, on GATT, on tax cuts, on killing the single-payer mandate, which, which is Obamacare. I mean, quite frankly, Ronald Reagan got half done what Trump's done in eight years. Okay? And I'm not saying Reagan was a bad guy, but first year he was great, and then he kind of went away. This is amazing. So that's coming up with exclusive info. But Trump is right about the FBI, New York Times, The Nation, Russiagate evolving into an effort to stigmatize dissent, the nation. Here's another one. Uh, I don't even look for these. It's everywhere. Tampa Bay, in text, FBI officials in Russia inquiry said Clinton just has to win. Liberal publication says it needs to end. FBI agent removed from Russia probe called Trump an idiot. Omaha World Herald. It goes on and on. They're only doing this because it's blown up in their face, and now they've gone and sued for peace. I can tell you they've gone to Mar-a-Lago, different globalist emissaries, and said, okay, you're right, okay, you're making the country great again, we'll leave you alone. That, I believe, at a gut level, is a foil. Is a, it, it, they're feigning. And then when they feign this way, they're going to come back and try to stab us. That's their very nature. They're dishonorable. We'll talk to Dr. Corsi here in a moment. First off, if you want to really be revolutionary, buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com. And a lot of you are, and I salute you and thank you. It's how we've got a Washington, D.C. correspondent like Dr. Corsi. It's how we're getting all these other correspondents I'm going to announce in the next month. It's how we're building all these big new studios and expanding. And I'm putting everything back into this because I'm totally committed. We're getting so censored on the Internet. Thank God we're expanding on AM and FM and UHF, VHF, and cable. But all these different stations want different types of satellites. I'm looking at a million and a half dollars a year to just deliver this to stations, and they're ready, hundreds of stations. And you're like, well, I already listened to you. I know, it's for people that don't. And that sounds like a lot of money. It's not. Glenn Beck spent $25 million a year just on his Glenn Beck channel, but there's thousands of channels on cable, and I'm not a rocket scientist, but the consultants agree with me because they tried to sell me Beck's channel. He just tried to get out of it you know, last year. Brokers did, and they said, "Oh, well, he got it for twenty million. Well, it's ten million a year for you." And I'm like, "I don't. I'm not doing it." So I have my own Alex Jones channel on cable. It doesn't matter now; it's oversaturated. But, but the reason I'm giving you inside baseball is to understand. I went. We needed to be on all the satellites and, and and systems so UHF, VHF, and cable stations can pick it up where they want it and reach out to the program directors. Well, I never even launched these programs, but it's they're already just doing it off one satellite we're on, but it, I've got the wrong one, and it's like 400000 a year, and there's a lot of rocket science goes into this, okay? But I'm just going to put my, uh, us on like five satellites, so everything they want is there, but it's going to cost a million and a half dollars a year. Buy some vitamins, buy some minerals, buy some water filters. You need them, they're great. We're delivering, we're changing the world. We're the vanguard of the reassurgence of America. You are supporting us. So we're all in this together, but they're coming after us. They're, they're cutting off our sponsors. They cut us off Google Ads. They've got lawsuits that I don't want to get into going on behind the scenes because most of them have already been defeated. Uh, the point is, is, that, is that they're coming after us. 
Congress admits they censor us. Go get free shipping. It's about to end the next two days, extended through Christmas, now the new year. Go get uh, the real red pill that has all the key precursors you need for healthy hormones and body. Total game changer. Get alpha power, uh, enhancement for stamina, libido, energy, beyond anything I've ever taken or seen. Totally healthy. Uh, you know, get the probiotics, Myco ZX, that knocks out the fungus and stuff in your gut. Nobody else has got that. It's incredible. That's back in stock after six months sold out. It's 50% off when you get it with our probiotic, Floralife. Commit to fund us at InfoWarsStore.com, and we will not let you down. As we've always told you, we're committed. We're zealots. We are free market. We are God-fearing. We are here. We are here. And we are your outpost in the war. So just as Trump said here years ago, I will not let you down. Well, he hasn't, we haven't, you haven't, so thank you, but commit. Sign up for auto ship, an additional 10% off, InfoWarsStore.com. But going to the new year, folks, we need the funds because I'm, I'm spending everything I've got right now. I haven't even been paid yet this year. I'm spending everything I've got to hire people, to get crew, to get trained, to build more websites, to launch effectively in the enemy's face. So InfoWarsStore.com or 888 Commit today to go there. Get the product, sign up for auto ship, colloidal silver, that's about to end. A bunch of these specials have to end because they're all about to sell out. A lot of this stuff's about to sell out. You like to do that before the end of the year so you don't have to pay tax on inventory. Uh, so we're going to be sold out of some of these things for months. Please take advantage today. Rainforce 50% off, free shipping, InfoWarsStore.com or 888-253-3139. All right, we've got him for this segment, the next two. Dr. Jerome Corsi, best-selling, uh, number one New York Times best-selling author, uh, ge geopolitical expert, Harvard graduate, uh, top uh, uh, expert on banking, uh, former State Department advisor. He's joining us. We're going to break here in a few minutes, but Doc, we haven't talked in a couple of weeks. Do you concur or what do you add to suddenly have establishment media saying, okay, Russia Gate's a fraud, the FBI has been discredited, we've got to stop. This signals what we already know has gone on behind the scenes. They've run up the white flag to the president, at least for now, at least certain elements of it. Uh, I think this is a deception. What do you think, Dr. Corsi? Well, I think it's largely that the whole Russia Gate narrative has failed and that it's clear it's failed. I mean, even the New York Times is trying to substitute a narrative with one of the lower down figures in the campaign, uh, talking trash, having drinks. I mean, the whole thing is clear that the, the Russia gate is a no evidence and has been no evidence from the beginning. And what you've had is it's turned on the Democrats in that now we know this fusion GPS document was used to get the FISA wiretapping you know, the electronic surveillance. Donald Trump was right. He was under electronic surveillance. So was his campaign. And I, I think that basis of that wiretap, the Fusion GPS, is fraudulent. Well, of course it was. How could they be case? so arrogant to commit all these crimes, criminal leaks, make stuff up, and now be caught? A Clinton coterie, a cabal in there trying to frame the president, thus the voters of America. I think they got used to under the Clinton years of having this compliant uh, mainstream media, lapdog media that repeated everything that Obama and Clinton wanted said, everything the deep state wanted parroted and broadcast. And what you find out is now you've got a situation where uh, the public is listening to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a whole different force to be reckoned with. And, you know, the mainstream media, the deep state have never dealt with someone like Donald Trump. This is important. It's very important. It's as important as World War II, quite frankly. Globalism, as you know, and we're a best-selling author uh, working with uh, Lou Dobbs, with the number one show on TV at the time, exposing that. And now here we are from being voices in the wilderness, myself, Ron Paul, Matt Drudge, so many others, uh, President Trump 30 years ago, 29 years ago, whatever, writing op-eds against NAFTA and GATT. I mean, here we all are. And now we're moving into the position of not being in control, but getting some of the tentacles off the throat of America. And we see life coming back in, and we see the globalists panicking, and we see uh, now the emails of Aberdeen coming out, confirming that she had classified info and that Hillary lied. I mean, you can see that Trump has taken the gloves off. He's known for that. I think he gave Hillary and the globalists their chance to kind of, like Napoleon, go to the island of Alba. But I think, like Napoleon, they came back. And so this time, they're going to get locked up for real. Give us your analysis and uh, where this is going. Uh, Trump is at war with the swamp. He's hired some swamp creatures to be his guides, but all I care about is results. We're getting 
unprecedented results. I, I, and quite frankly, I'm surprised how much results Trump's gotten. This is quite a uh, turnabout here. Well, and we've been following, I've been very closely following this QAnon, and I started it when the executive order came out on the 21st, which was really, um, uh, you know, just a few days ago, this executive order suddenly appears, President Trump signs it, and he says that this is against international trafficking, human rights violations, and the executive order declares that a national emergency exists, that a state of national emergency exists. It's not only that, that we have the, the Treasury Department has the right to confiscate the assets of those involved in human rights trafficking, but also uh, that the state of emergency is in place, which means we're under martial law for this category of offenses. And then QAnon links it to Eric Schmidt and Eric Schmidt resigns uh, the same day that from Alphabet, as head of Alphabet, the same day that this executive order is coming out, and they're and they're linked, because you see the extensive uh, funding and involvement. Uh, QAnon did this long uh, narrative, which we decoded, and it was clear that part of that narrative, central to it, was the fact that Eric Schmidt had funded Hillary, run her IT department. Uh, was involved very deeply in this crowd. Uh, this and, crowd and, and, and that ties into Pakistan. Right, ties into Pakistan. All this ties into the entire development of the Russian collusion narrative. Now, what it looks like, and you know, we've been able to confirm a variety of things from the QAnon. I mean, this national. Well, let Arizona me just say Army this to stop you. And I'm going to hold you in the next segment. Let me just say this to stop you. Right. I mean, you, you, you've you been at the highest levels of banking, friends with Donald Trump. You've got all your own CIA connections. So do I. Uh, the reason QAnon is so important is much of what he's saying is the same intel we're getting. Precisely. And so and, and then it's gotten attention. So it's a way to focus people. And we're not lessening QAnon or, or 8chan or the rest of it. But this is a real executive order. And, 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 and as you said, a lot of my listeners went, Alex, this is martial law, this executive order. Well, we're under globalist attack. They've seized the country. He's cutting your taxes. He's securing the borders. He's taking care of the veterans. He's trying to take care of old people. He's getting rid of Obamacare meant to screw you over. When you're in a war, it's martial law against the globalists. If they start using it against the people, I'll go ape. That's not what's happening. We're under globalist foundation control. And if Trump's going to take the gloves off when deep state's openly saying kill him, and he's got to get geared up to do this, Cutting off Saudi Arabia, going and making them make a deal, cutting off the Clintons and globalist money. That's where it was coming from. That's what Vegas was about. I have my own military intelligence and CIA sources that are saying on air, like Zach, and I'm not going to say his real name, obviously, Zach's his first name, who are giving us the exact same intel before QAnon. So all I'm saying is we're confirming what QAnon's saying from our own sources, and it's incredibly bold. Well, and also I think, you know, QAnon is clearly an intelligence source of one kind or another as inside information. I mean, I'm able to decode it from the background I've got in an intelligence, but it, QAnon is validating, Alex, the things that you've been saying for years. And, you know, that's where the affinity comes. He's giving, there's background here that validates all the points that you've been making about the globalists. The martial law is here. That martial law was declared in that executive order. And Trump is going after the money of human rights violators, I mean, which, which again, explain that's that's the uh, that's the main funding of the globalist system. Explain that. Yeah, well, that's the key. I mean, the whole funding, this whole pedophilia, and I mean, you were pounded months ago for going after this, but I think now it's going to be validated. You're going to be vindicated in 2018 because this whole pedophilia network, which is billions and billions of dollars, uh, has been uh, in, intertwined and. In, in Wall Street, it's intertwined in the news media, in Hollywood. You see it in the political circles. And I think Donald Trump's going after it. I mean, and it is validation. I, I wanted to point out, I was able to validate that this Arizona National Guard unit uh, has just been moved from Phoenix. They moved about um, four dozen soldiers, part of the 850 unit National Guard, which are military police battalion have just been moved to Gitmo. And that's after you had um, you know, Secretary of Defense Mattis visit Gitmo. You've had um, Attorney General Sessions visit Gitmo. I mean, clearly something is going on. And this executive order is a clear definition, declaration 
that we are in a state of emergency, which gives the powers of the presidency really exceptional characteristics and abilities. And let's be clear, the, de the Democrats, people say, Alex, you're the one that always warned of this, now you're for it. The Democrats have announced, we want a state of emergency, we want civil unrest, we want Trump arrested or killed, we want to kill all the Republicans, hashtag kill Republicans. They're building towards this emergency, as they said, in December. So Trump put this in with the intel to basically block their funding. He already cut off Saudi Arabia. So again, folks, he's blocking them with the executive power. They're wrongly trying to launch this without executive power as a rogue group. It, clearly, this is what's happening. And the word is that what we're seeing with QAnon and my other sources that are confirmed, high-level Army Special Operations Command, you name it, is that this, what we're seeing from QAnon is warnings to Hillary and warnings to Soros that you're going to be in Gitmo if you keep pushing it. Not that they're actually going to be going there. Go ahead. Well, and also, Alex, I want to point out that the two gentlemen who run the QAnon in 8chan. We've had them on. Also on the Reddit, the subreddit, which is, you know, the calm before the storm, CBTS underscore stream. Came on the show on Alex. Came on your show last week, and spent a good deal of time, and was it was all over the subreddit. You just calm before the storm slash stream, and and with hundreds of responses to it, a couple hundred that I read. So you see, the QAnon is acknowledging that in fact you, Alex, have been ahead of the curve, and that your audience is ahead of the curve. Well, well exactly. QAnon. It's not about you. And I know you're just pointing out we've been right, but again, it's not about us. I'm just pointing out. This is real. We've had Phil Mudd, the former head of counterterrorism, saying we're going to kill the president on CNN. I mean, they did that to rally their troops to say, I mean, the, 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 what's the word, though? Because the last five days, they have been signaling that they're backing off. They crapped their pants after this executive order. Uh, McCabe announced he's resigning, leaving. Uh, uh, Schmidt, I mean, they're really signaling that, they, that they're scared. Well, I, I think what we're seeing is this is the beginning of the Trump counterattack. And it has, I think, two elements to it. One is, you see, Trump very effectively working now with Congress. Nunes in the Senate, you're gonna see Gowdy and Jim Jordan in the House, uh, who are gonna press these issues of McCabe and Strozik and all the holdovers from Obama that were really determined to run a very biased FBI and Department of Justice that was gonna get, excuse Hillary of everything and go after Trump on of fake charges of this whole Russian collusion issue. Now, what you've got in this, what you've got going on, I think extremely here, is that Trump is saying, I've had enough of it. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna counterattack. He's gonna say, I'm coming after you, and we're gonna get the money. The money is gonna be the number one target, and the money is, I think, cut off, is gonna uh, severely limit the ability of the, you know, of the deep state to operate. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not mad at myself, but when I read the executive order last week, I said, this is martial law, and I understood what the president was doing, and I meant to come on air and say it's basically financial martial law against multinational combines uh, and these big foundations. And then I just never came on air and did it. But Corsi is now breaking it down, and we really are under a civil emergency. A national emergency has been declared by President Trump. But the globalists were announcing they want their own national emergency and to take Trump out. So it's very constitutional what he's doing as president when an outside group is doing this and he's only targeting them. And he went and made deals with Saudi Arabia to cut off the funding to the globalists. Uh, big things are happening. This is so epic. I can't believe it. And everything Trump's doing is delivering power back to the people as he pledged a year and 11 days ago or no, no. Uh, 11 months and 11 days ago or whatever it was on January 20th, 2017. So as we end the year, got about four minutes left, Dr. Corsi. This is so epic. This is so big. This is so huge. Well, I, I think, you know, you see, there's a, first of all, with Saudi Arabia, it, it's Donald Trump visited Saudi Arabia. And then very quickly after that, uh, the prince begins to round up all of the key operatives in Saudi Arabia and takes their money, confiscates their money, alawid. Who is very, very the main funder of Obama and Hillary, and now it's happening here. And, and the in this recent ex executive order, and what the Treasury came out with in an annex, the people they're going after, you know, the vast majority of them have deep ties to the Clinton Foundation, have deep ties uh, to the Clinton Global Initiative. 
These are international criminals that engaged in a variety of activities, including human rights abuses and human trafficking. Now, if, if uh, Donald Trump is going after the money again, this is fun. This is you know warfare. This is a clear indication that Donald Trump understands the deep state's use of money and their corruption in human uh, resources. You're going to see millionaires suddenly leave the United States without explanation. You're going to see CEOs resigning without explanation. You see suicides occur. This is going to be massive, I believe, and I think it's already started. And Donald Trump is in a counterattack. 2018 is going to be the year of Donald Trump's counterattack. Well, there's the headline on this epic live interview, radio, TV. I'm going to I'm going to have it posted with uh, you know that very headline: that 2018 is the year of Donald Trump's counterattack. That's so sensational and true, uh, but, but I mean, it's even more sensational. He's declared civil emergency to actually block them before they declare the civil emergency outside of law and cut their money off, and he's done it. I mean, it's, 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 it's can you believe we've been so used to corruption and evil to now actually see a very pragmatic kind of JFK-style tax plan that's actually for the people? I mean, I am just so proud that we back Trump, Corsi. Well, this this is a, Donald Trump's the chief executive. He understands this is the first time we really had a president who's going to use the enormous powers of the presidency for eliminating corruption, not for advancing corruption. He's they fired every the lobbyist. They no one's ever. He actually fired all lobbyists. That's why they're pissed. There's no lobbyist right. there giving him ideas. He, he fired. He, he fired. You know the whole section of the HIV/AIDS group that was in the White House. Just got rid of them. The whole group. You know, he's he's firing left and right, not hiring in the state Even department. CNN admitted that he has massively cut the government. Yes. Except and for now, veterans affairs and the military. And the presidency has enormous powers. He's using them on executive orders to eliminate what he can of the government, regulations. And now he's going to go after human, human rights violations, which is going to be epic. And then sure enough, I see him punched up on the Skype here in the studio uh, for the TV slash radio simulcast. And there he is in a tuxedo with a martini. Uh, I'm sure a dry martini. I don't, I don't have a drink here to toast him, but I'll, I'll, I'll toast my Uramade uh, tea. Because I go to bed about 9 at night if I don't drink Uramade at this time. Uh, so I, but I don't know. Is that good luck to toast uh, iced tea uh, with uh, South American iced tea? Uh, with a martini shaken, not stirred. We'll see, but boy, talk about celebration. Talk about delivery. Talk about us getting used to being lied to and told that politicians would never tell the truth. Well, guess what? Donald Trump isn't one, and he's draining the swamp. He's on the offense. We're going to get into big breaking news. We've given you positive news about the president going after the globalists, declaring financial martial law over the foundations uh, to, 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 to counter them, a good form of civil emergency. Uh, but uh, they're going to be counter-striking. But Roger Stone, my friend, uh, it is good uh, to share New Year's Eve with you, my comrade in libertarian capitalism. Alex, uh, Happy New Year. I uh, hope you had a terrific holiday season. Uh, boy, the president has delivered our presence in spades. The elitists are hysterical, near suicidal, uh, because both on the economic front, on the foreign policy front, uh, the president is doing exactly what he told the American people he would do, something that's unheard of in American politics, a candidate who gets elected and actually delivers on their platform. Uh, and now with this new executive order, uh, which David and I, and I spoke about extensively yesterday morning, he's laid the groundwork for a sweep up of the bad guys. You can see that this was specifically tailored uh, for the Uranium One situation, uh, for a sweep up of Bill, Hillary, and perhaps even Barack Obama himself in terms of the massive crimes that they have been exposed on in just the last three weeks. And by the way, everybody knows we don't hype stuff here. We just lay out the facts. Suddenly, so I saw the executive order last week and I had you on, I had Corsi, and I, and I agree that's where it's going. And we, the Saudi Arabian deal and all of it, cutting off their money. But now, not just Schmidt, not just McCabe resigning, you have suddenly hundreds of leftist newspapers, CNN, The Nation, uh, you name it, saying 
it's all a fraud. The Russia Gate was a fraud. It was criminal. It was terrible. The Clintons are evil. They're finally giving up the ghost, I believe, at least on the surface. So let's get into their counter strike or, you know, we know they're duplicitous. There's no honor amongst thieves. But uh, to you, the listeners, everybody else, uh, I think the age of treachery that we've been in for 50 years is beginning to turn. Doesn't mean there's some utopia we're about to enter, but the age of honor is coming back. So here is the sun coming back. Here is the light coming back. And here is to you, Roger Stone, to President Trump and our listeners. I salute you all, my friend. Thank you, Alex. And here's to you and the entire vanguard at InfoWars, because you have been the cutting edge of this revolution. Well, I don't want to brag about it. The history books have to be written. It's just an example of victory. We've both gone through hell. They tried to kill you. And they asked you to classify that you were hit with a polonium. And they've tried to destroy everything I've got and, 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 and come pretty close and, you know, tried to take my kids away from me. It's, it's been a serious. But you know what? I don't feel, I'm not an SJW. I don't feel sorry for myself. These scars are my, my masterwork. I mean, this scarred. Body, I love it. I, I I love the battle scars. I just love being a man, Roger. Not not a superstar, not a superman, but a man. I mean, how good does it feel to see real history now with our fingertips and our listeners and activist fingertips all over it? I mean, this is epic. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. I have no doubt whatsoever, Alex, that Donald Trump could not have been nominated without the support of InfoWars and the entire alternative conservative uh, community uh, across the board. 2016 was the year in which the mainstream media lost their stranglehold on the entire dissemination of political information. Now they seek, I think too late, to put the toothpaste back in the tube. But make no mistake about it, the, the deep state does intend to counterattack. They are not just going to go quietly. Uh, they are continuing to plot and scheme against this president. Now, I know with the president ending the year on a high uh, with his massive tax cut, the largest tax cut in U.S. history, uh, and a, a real surge in the stock market, historic lows in unemployment, uh, a boom in the housing market, uh, a new confidence in America around the globe, that this will seem far-fetched to some. Some will scoff and say, oh, uh, you fellows are just conspiracy theorists. No, let me be as clear as I can. The 25th Amendment strategy that I have outlined here on InfoWars is still very much afoot. And that will be accompanied by drugging of his food. We'll talk about it next segment. But right now, I want to get into the victory with you. And then I want to get into their counter strikes and the big news you're going to be breaking about. Who's going to be leaving the administration uh, next and the big fight there. But what does it mean to have... CNN, the New York Times, uh, the Nation, and a bunch, I mean, so many papers, I can't even list them all. I covered them earlier. Admitting it's all a fraud, it's an attack on free speech. I mean, some of these things have you front page. Here it is, Russiagate is devolving into an effort to stigmatize dissent. It's got you testifying on Capitol Hill. Uh, I mean, all of this, what does that signify? Because that's that can't just be playing possum. I mean, suddenly to have hundreds of papers saying we were wrong, Russia Gates authoritarian, we're sorry. I mean, I think they're doing it because it blew up in their face and they know now that they just hope it goes away. Well, this has been a failed gambit. The entire argument that Donald Trump uh, was assisted in his election by uh, Vladimir Putin and the Russians has collapsed. It's collapsed of its own weight because there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that that is the case. But it would be a mistake, Alex, to think that CNN and the hardcore left, uh, the George Soros financed cabal that has run this country for the last 30 years, uh, is going to throw in the towel. They can't give I up. See, I, I see a real difference between responsive, uh, responsible, yes, even patriotic liberals who are just misguided in their views, but who don't hate America, like the some of the folks uh, at The Nation who have reached the right conclusion, which is to say the entire Russian charade is an attempt to stifle free expression uh, and that they've come up empty handed, despite the fact that they spent. Sure, and it's, it is destroying the FBI. But 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 what what would CNN have you seen? CNN now has a multiple articles saying, quote, Trump was right about the FBI. That's today. What will they say tomorrow? In other words, I think that is a tactic rather than a change in strategy. Uh, and they know that the president is having a very, very strong December, to say the least. 
that he's going into the new year with the wind to his back. But uh, So they're I just leaning on the ropes right now, knowing it's killing him to be anti-American recovery. So they're just kind of recessing into the shadows. Well, I have a number of things to report about the plot that is afoot when we get to the next segment. But Alex, in the meantime, I really hope that the expansion of InfoWars can continue uh, and that folks will go to the InfoWars store because it's programming just like this that's paid for by our listeners. We don't have any wealthy billionaire right wingers standing in the wings. Uh, and uh, they got rid of the exemption on the property taxes above ten thousand dollars and did a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, I got a two point cut in income taxes, but the other stuff I'm paying more. I love it. I don't like the globalist fat cat liberals having $20 million houses and putting all their stuff in that and paying no tax, basically, federally with their exemption. And so Cuomo and others are so pissed. You're right. All you liberal, ultra-rich people, you know, they admit co liberals in Congress have 70-plus percent of the money. I'm sick of filthy rich tax-exempt jerks like Bezos that's taxpayer-funded with stuff you got Obama to pass, telling a working family making $200,000 a year that they're rich pigs. They all got big tax cuts, and people making 50 grand dead, and now all these bonuses, and I love it! And I love paying more taxes if it means getting the country going. Roger Stone, what do you say to this? And then get into all your huge news. Now you got huge news. You're going to ride shotgun with Caputo coming up. But man, just seeing Trump deliver, it's just so good after the dark night of liars with the Democrats and Republican scumbags to see somebody who isn't out to rape the country. Well, Alex, I love it when you call Governor Cuomo out because a very, very prominent New Yorker went to Governor Cuomo only days ago and said, look, uh, since you no longer have the deductibility of New York's very high uh, income taxes, uh, why not have New York taxpayers pay that money uh, to a tax-free foundation, to a nonprofit, which would then give it to the state? They could take the deduction, the state would get the money, Everybody would benefit. And the governor's response was not interested. No, he's only interested in trashing President Trump. He's not interested in a true solution and lower taxes for the people of the Empire State. Uh, so, Alex, uh, I think you hit it right on the head. For the vast majority of working Americans, uh, this tax cut is evocative of the tax cuts of Ronald Reagan, John F. Kennedy, and we know that a rising tide lifts all Well, boats. think about Trump, We're how much property he owns. This is a huge, this is the untold story. I was doing the math last night just on what's available. This looks like he's going to lose hundreds of millions of dollars a year on right off himself. I mean, when I saw that, that my taxes actually went up, but for working class and middle class, it went down. It made me love Trump even more. He actually, it's, 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 a, it's the ultra rich should be paying more tax. He's like the real Bernie Sanders. It's incredible. No, and this has some precedent. You know, when he thought about running for president in 2000, he put forward a proposal in which the mega rich would pay more. This included himself. He knew that he would be taxing himself greater, but he wanted to erase the deficit to make America stronger. That's the kind of selfless patriot Donald Trump is. So, yes, he will pay more under this plan. You and I will pay more. Uh, but the vast majority of working Americans who voted for Donald Trump are going to get a tax cut. And uh, the people can dispose of their own money better than the government can. You know, it's You're sick. It's suddenly I want to pay my taxes and I never have because suddenly I feel like it's finally for America, at least in the idea. Well, look, I, I follow uh, the writings of economists like Larry Kudlow and uh, and uh, Steve Moore of the Heritage Foundation, and they've been beating this drum all the way back to the Trump campaign. Donald Trump had from the beginning the most dynamic, the most pro-growth tax proposal of any candidate, Republican or Democrat. And now, lo and behold, despite the fact that some in the Congress have added some Christmas tree provisions, he's making it happen. This is going to be the, the, the greatest economic boom in American history, and it's going to turbocharge our economy, it's, which is going to make removing him even harder, but that will not uh, in any way uh, dampen the attempt by the deep state and the two-party duopoly, the elites of both the Republican and Democratic Party, who still, despite the president's incredible success, want this president gone. And let's be clear that I'm going to get the big news. If you look at the geniuses within the next two years, 
analysts agree it's going to put pressure on the blue states that write off their income tax that's super high and write off their property tax that's super high that then balloons it because it's written off. It makes people launder money through it. Then no money goes to the central government. Then the money only goes to rich globalists in those states that are writing it off. This actually makes them pay taxes, but it'll put pressure for the states now and the cities that do this to lower taxes to reasonable levels. I mean, you look at the genius. It's like, I think I'm pretty smart, Roger, but I read this in aftermath now and I go, man, as, as bad as some of his advisors are, whatever's happening, some good stuff's going on, Roger. Well, what the president said in that New York Times interview of a couple of days ago is absolutely right. He understands tax policy better than the economists. Alex, let's move to the news because I think it's important. Yeah, I don't, I'm going to the next segment too because Caputo's coming up. Yeah, let's get in. Just a, give us a taste of what's coming up. The good, the bad, the young. Because there's some bad news too. We got some big news on who's going to be leaving. We've also let's do 25th Amendment right now though. Well, first let's go to a question you asked me yesterday because at least three senior administrative source administration sources told me, and I reported here at Infowars that Secretary of State Tillerson was leaving around January 1st. Now, suddenly, after a private meeting with General Mattis and General Kelly, well, it appears that Mr. Tillerson is staying, at least for the time being. I don't know what reason the generals gave the president, but I know what their game plan is. They need Tillerson's vote for their 25th Amendment takedown. They are head counting. Anybody who thinks that Mike Pence isn't planning to move into the big office is wrong. His top aide, Nick Ayers, was caught leaking detrimental information about the president. And rather than fire Ayers, uh, his press secretary, Mark Lauder, an exceptionally able young man, took the fall for him. So uh, there are people staying and there are people leaving. We will get back into it in the next segment, as you say. But uh, I stand by my prediction. Tillerson will stay around long enough to be of use to the deep state. Let's not forget where Tillerson came from. He was recommended for the Secretary of State job by Condoleezza Rice, hardly a Trump supporter. Exactly. I'm just frothing about how good things are, but you're right. I mean, it's just like McCabe, the architect of the fake Russiagate investigation as the deputy director, advised the president, I guess Rosenstein, to put him in. Now he's leaving as the president knows he's a fraud. That's an example of how the president's really smart instinct-wise but surrounded on research by bad research, putting in globalists around him. Well, I think he's often, Alex, not told all the facts. In other words, they say, oh, Mr. President, this is John Smith. He had excellent grades in college. He's been endorsed by five Republican U.S. senators that you like. He'd be perfect for this job. No one says, and oh, by the way, he's a member of the Trilateral Commission and the Council on Foreign Relations. And I got to tell you, I feel so satisfied, so satiated. I feel so empowered. I feel so good about pushing Trump and going my gut. And everything that's happened in the last 11 months and 10 days, it's amazing. Michael Caputo, former senior advisor of the Trump campaign, head of the New York campaign as well. Uh, politics at New York.net. He's been accused of being a Russian agent. That whole narrative's falling apart spectacularly. We'll get his take in a moment on what he sees happening in the new year and just where we're at politically. But wow, I just feel like if I'm not gushing, I'm not being honest. And I'm always just honest. But, but Roger Stone, there are some poison linings to this. Give us the intrigue you've been trying to get to, but I wanted to hold it till now, about the big resignation you learned about from a little birdie, big exclusive that the media all pays attention to your exclusives because they're 99% of the time accurate. Your big exclusive, and then uh, the next big shoot of drops and, and the six. What should be, what should, we shouldn't be too arrogant, as the wolf says in Pulp Fiction. We shouldn't start, you know what, each other yet. What should we be watching for? Roger Stone, the will co-host here with Michael Caputo here in just a minute. Well, Alex, I think you're absolutely right. Um, we should not uh, just assume because the president is having these extraordinary successes that it uh, in any way dampens the resolve uh, of the deep state or tamps down the deep enmity they have for both the president culturally or his policies, which are, you know, nationalists, which are pro-American sovereignty, which are pro-American exceptionalism, which are uh, you know, a tip of the hat to Americana and the greatness of this country. Uh, they've had their way for 30 years. 
They have no intention of relinquishing the steering wheel to Donald Trump uh, this easily. They're still shocked that he pulled off his most improbable victory in the last election against all odds. Uh, General John Kelly, uh, whose own personal politics are progressive left, and who has sought to put a cocoon around the president, cutting him off from his natural allies in the conservative and liberty movement, uh, is telling uh, intimates that he himself will leave within three to four months. Uh, and I think this is the key. And the president's new chief of staff would be Rob Porter uh, of Ohio, the uh, Bush uh, uh, Quisling, the uh, U.S. senator, member of the Trilateral Commission and the Council on Foreign Relations. Now, uh, I bring this up now, uh, and I know that some out there will say, oh, this is this is a, a conspiracy theory. Let us just see. I think it's vital that the president know uh, who exactly who Rob Porter is. And when they say the president, do they necessarily mean Donald Trump? Uh, mark my words, Alex, despite the fact that we're high-fiving each other right now and that the president is in an exceptionally good mood, having had a great year, uh, this is going to come on fast and furious, and it will be vicious. You're going to see an uptake in the Trump is crazy talk. You heard it here on InfoWars first. I said it months ago. When the Russian collusion delusion collapses, when they are proven to be completely You said it in March. You said it March. You said it because you, well, you have the sources. And, 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 and that's where I want to go next with, with, with uh, you and Michael Caputo, politicsny.net, uh, is that why is the New York Times, Michael Caputo, why is the all these publications saying, okay, Russia Gate's fake, the FBI is in trouble, uh, we, you know, we admit it's a fraud, let's just leave it alone. Why are they signaling that all over the place the last four or five days? Michael Caputo, what do you make of that being a former top Trump advisor and then other other big issues? You're the expert here. What other information do you want to impart to the listeners about where we are right now in this war to retake America from the globalists? It's interesting. I think, frankly, that it was always going to end this way. The Russia-Trump uh, collusion, delusion was always going to come apart. And I think they're they, you know, the, the left is probably high five in themselves that they were able to keep that ball in the air as long as they were were able to. You know, frankly, this has all been about a, a very important agenda on the left. That is, they're going to destroy Donald Trump. They're going to destroy his family. They're going to destroy his businesses and they're going to destroy his friends because God forbid in 10 years or 15 years, another American minded billionaire comes forward and says, honey, I can fix this. I think I need to run for president. They want that person to have a second thought. Look what they did to Trump and his family and his businesses and his friends. And I think they've taken this Russia collusion delusion as far down the track as they could. You know, Alex, when I was working with the president during the campaign, there was a point when I, when it, 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 there was a signal to me, I thought, that the Hillary side of the of the campaign had cracked the code, had figured out how to get Donald Trump. And that was to insult him, to insult his family, or to insult his businesses in an unreasonable and an unseemly way, have that advanced by the media, and he would get angry and make mistakes. We saw that time and again tried on him during the campaign, and occasionally it, it succeeded. What they've done here is, as we saw in the book Shattered, which was written about the time after the election, the Clinton team decided that they were going to have this Russia collusion delusion as their front line, as their first story, and try to put the president in a situation where he would mess up, and in this circumstance, perhaps commit obstruction. And uh, they, I think they're satisfied that they've moved the ball so far as they have. What do you make of them then suddenly coming out and saying, okay, it's a fraud, okay? I mean, is that just them hedging their bets because they realize the, the public isn't buying into it because now all these documents have come out and the admissions of like 26 people in the FBI and Justice Department colluding to make all this up? It's interesting, Alex. I'd love to hear what Roger has to say. I haven't had a chance to talk to him about this, but the big blockbuster uh, nothing burger in the New York Times 
about Papadopoulos that came out this weekend. I can't quite figure out, trying to read the tea leaves, why they would break this story on New Year's Eve weekend, which I believe is perhaps the, the worst weekend of the year to break news. I wonder what well, Roger thinks about that. Uh, let me take a shot at this. Here's the thing I think it's important to understand. The globalists always have a plan A and a plan B and a plan C. Plan A has been a limited success in the sense that they have tied the president up for over a year over nothing. And sadly, a substantial number of Americans, thank God a minority, still believe that the Kremlin somehow tried to help Donald Trump get elected despite the fact that they've turned up no evidence whatsoever. Or that all three of us work for the Kremlin. And they have taken, they accuse us of being Russian agents. They accused uh, 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 Infowars of using Russian bots to, to uh, post our links, complete nonsense. They take a completely innocent and totally legal meeting by Donald Trump Jr. And they try to make it a criminal conspiracy or at a minimum, a campaign finance violation. It is neither, but they are abandoning plan A. It's over. We're now moving to plan B. Plan B is a removal under the 25th Amendment, a bogus claim. And as you said, Kelly and, and others, everybody wants to lionize them. You think from your sources, well, let me ask Caputo that we come back. What about the 25th Amendment? I mean, how can they get rid of the president now? More, more rape gate, you know, made up stuff. We'll talk about it all. Michael Caputo. Uh, former senior advisor to Trump during the campaign politics, New York.net. So I, I really asked Michael Caputo, former top Trump advisor, and of course, Roger Stone, former head of his campaign, to just take over this final segment. Because so if they pause, I'll, I'll, I'll run rampant here and just give us other tidbits. And I said, Caputo and Stone, when you talk about it, he said, well, what's next? Indictment of Jared Kushner, but also midterms 2018. Because 2017, 2016's our beachhead. 2018's key. Say what you want about Roy Moore. He got the election stolen from him. That's been proven. So I think election fraud is going to be the key to what they do. So guys, go ahead and have a free-for-all for the 10 minutes we have left here. All right. Well, I'm happy to dive in. Uh, look, I think Mueller has had uh, as bad a month of December as the president had good. His entire uh, probe is exposed as the partisan witch hunt that he is, that it is. Uh, his hit squad is exposed as uh, uh, as exactly that. And now the only way that he can regain the upper hand uh, is uh, through the guilty plea of General Mike Flynn, who I believe is a great, great patriot. Uh, Flynn has been jammed up in a process crime. There's nothing illegal or improper regarding his outreach to the Russians to set up a meeting. In case you haven't been paying attention, folks, the Russians have thermonuclear weapons. Not speaking to them would be very, very dangerous. Uh, but we do know that uh, that Flynn has said publicly that a senior member of the president's transition team instructed him to reach out to the Russian ambassador. That can only be Mr. Kushner. Let me stress again, even if it, even if Jared Kushner did do that, that's a perfectly appropriate legal function of the transition and a counselor to the president. Yet we know that the FBI has grilled Kushner for hours. Uh, and therefore the question becomes, do they try to jam him up with some kind of process crime uh, like they did with Flynn in an attempt to inflame the president and induce the president to fire Mueller or perhaps to pardon both Kushner and Flynn. Well, clearly that was their admitted plan. They've telegraphed it with all their talking points on CNN. But now Michael Caputo, it, it seems to be blowing up as it's, I mean, even mainstream publications admit it's all a frame up of Trump. I mean, uh, are they crazy enough to go forward with us? What comes next? Well, I, I think it's interesting. I, I, I don't just uh, count the tea leaves that are there. I look for the ones that aren't there. And you know what's not there after all these stories about what Flynn did and what the coffee boy Papadopoulos did. We've seen very little about Jared Kushner. And uh, the question, you know, we also see that the, the Kushner and his legal team were out shopping for a public relations firm. So it appears they are looking, you know, forward into 2018 and seeing a more serious fight on their hands as well. So the lack oh, of- Oh, absolutely. They, they plan to indict Kushner next. 
I don't think they got the huevos to do it to Donald Jr. So, so yeah, go, 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 I'll keep going. Yeah, I just think the lack of news on Kushner shows to me that he's probably his time in the barrel is coming in this new year. And that's unfortunate, but you know, he appears to be their new target. We also see in this New York Times story, as many errors as I saw in it, we also see that Papadopoulos was somebody who was running absolutely amok. Uh, and if you believe what the New York Times is saying, uh, he was doing things that were, you know, and and the one thing that's, the, the, I'm sorry, the two things that are very uh, much missing from that New York Times story is there's no mention of anyone who carried his water uh, to the president or that he actually connected. Well, it. yeah, he's like this low level guy that keeps going, let's meet with the Russians. They're like, shut up, Russians, they don't matter. It, it, it's like hundreds of times he was obviously, it looks to me like he was a plant from the beginning. I mean, you read those transcripts, does it not look like he's a plant from the beginning? It does. He's either a plant or he's just or he's just stupid. Let's be clear. He's a volunteer. He has no authority. He's not on the payroll. He doesn't have a past. To sure, get but he's like a wind up doll. He just goes meet with the Russians, meet with the Russians, meet, and then they're like, "Shut up, kid." Russians aren't. Dude, yeah. I mean, it's like there's I nothing there. Of, some of the interesting parts of the story were that uh, the, it was very clear from the New York Times story that that everybody in the campaign thought this guy was stupid, that he was uh, 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 foolishly enthusiastic, and that he had terrible ideas. And it comes through in the story as well. I think uh, they also in that story said that uh, Sessions, I believe it was, wanted to move away from his ideas because there was no way if they were ever gonna meet with the Russians that they would do so through the auspices of a young and inexperienced person like Papadopoulos. So some of that- Well, story exactly, that's the meetings I'm saying where Sessions is like, yeah. Russians, what it's like it's like talking about, you know, just but random let's, let's, crap. But let's play it out here. See, what they would like to have happen is the president, uh, uh, first of all, it's not inconsistent because the indictment of Kushner would be not related to Russian collusion. It would be related to lying to the FBI. Right. Then uh, they hope that the president will overreact and fire Mueller. This is their briar patch strategy. They are so naked. Please throw you us. have Congresswoman Jackie Spire, rhymes with liar, running around saying, oh, the rumors everywhere, Trump is gonna fire Mueller. They want him to fire So, so let me Mueller. ask you both, let me ask, let me ask Michael Caputo here as we end this year's transmissions. Clearly it's falling apart. What, how do they extricate themselves with face shaving or is all this face shaving a, 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 a ploy for what they're really about to do with Russiagate. Is it dead or does it still have legs? Michael Caputo. I think that the, the House and Senate investigations, uh, the multiple investigations over in Congress there are gonna wind down. You'll see a representative smear and representative Schiff uh, uh, spending a lot of time screaming about it to the press uh, because they've gotten a free ride in the media for quite some time. I believe we'll see Mueller's investigation wind down necessarily too with maybe even some more process crimes accused and prosecuted but in the end i think the net that they're gonna the, they're gonna come up with is just gonna have one papadopoulos in it and nobody else because i believe manafort and gates are gonna break free of these allegations and i believe general flynn when we find out what 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 agent struck did and how he tricked him into this uh this alleged interview where he lied i think th that's gonna come out in the wash as well I totally agree, but you know, they never give up, even though they're getting their ass kicked, politically, you name it. If America doesn't roll over like Bernie Sanders did when they stole the nomination, when Hillary did, we're gonna win. But if we roll over, that's the bottom line. You know, I had the crew run out to the local uh, grocery store to get a, a bottle of champagne here at the end because I didn't have any alcohol when Roger was drinking his dry martini, but to uh, Mike Caputo and to Roger Stone and to Donald Trump and our listeners, most importantly, we're not perfect, but we're not out to screw you over. We're not out to set up some, you know, Venezuelan or North Korean hellhole because we're a bunch of, you know, one inch, you know, what long people that hate everybody. So happy new year to everybody. And I want to give you both a one minute comment here at the end. But to my crew and all of you and the listeners, I love you. And I am so proud to be associated with people that are pro-freedom and pro-America. So to all of you, to Mr. Caputo and Mr. Mr. Stone and the, and the great crew here, God bless you, gentlemen, each of you. Mr. Caputo first, a one minute Final comment here as we go into 2018. Well, 2017 has been has been hell for a lot of people. It's been difficult in a lot of ways, but we sure came out of it strong. 
I've always known uh, Donald Trump to finish strong when he's in the midst of a, of a difficult business battle. And he ended 2017, uh, I think, with one for the record books. With what he did, with regulations, cutting 900-plus regulations, installing Gorsuch and a dozen appeals court justices, he's achieved more in one year than many presidents have in their first year. And he comes out of it, depending upon what poll you believe, with just about the same poll rating that Barack Obama did in his first year. That doesn't sound great to me, though, because in my book, 2018 is going to be a big challenge. We can get there. The campaign geniuses in Washington have to come to terms with some unfortunate facts. But what they can't do and they should never do is, uh, let's say, uh, abandon and kick out of the party the, the Bannons, the, the Breitbarts, the Infowars, the Fox News, the grassroots the people who elected Donald exactly. Trump. Exactly. We, we've got a huge year ahead of us. Everybody's, if we go to sleep, the globalists could win. If we stay awake, we win. Roger Stone, uh, let's let's both hear toast to you and, and the audience, everybody. I salute you. We got 30 seconds left. Final comment going into 2018. Well, Alex, look, I want to salute you because you had the courage and the foresight to be for Donald Trump when people like Glenn Beck were saying, oh, he's a disaster. He's a, a sure loser. And you never wavered. Well, I remember talking to you the day the NBC Billy Bush tape dropped. You never wavered. You said, well, we're going to get over this. We're going to win this thing. A and you were right. Support good oral health with our one-of-a-kind super blue fluoride-free products. InfoWars Life brings you a revolutionary toothpaste blend with iodine and nano silver designed to deliver a powerful clean. Enjoy a minty fresh flavor made with peppermint oil or try our bubblegum flavor. Pair this groundbreaking toothpaste with the super blue fluoride-free mouthwash and supercharge your oral health. Our amazing mouthwash features natural oils and ancient ingredients used since aboriginal and biblical times. Instead of containing containing fluoride, our super blue line is loaded with the good halogen iodine and an array of other beneficial compounds that have been hand selected for their oral health benefits. Super blue fluoride free mouthwash and toothpaste are the first and only to contain all of these natural ingredients. Xylitol, nano silver, and iodine. Notice the difference with our super blue fluoride free products. Refresh your breath and invigorate your oral health routine at InfoWarsStore.com. That's InfoWarsStore.com.